we see that, many, that, that the life of Christ in me is reflected by what I do and what I say among each and every one of us. And in order to, for us to find grace before the throne of grace, we must also extend grace, unmerited favour among our brethren, especially of the household of faith within the body of Christ. And the success of our relationship on a heavenly scale is often weighed on our relationships here on this earth. Now we live in a broken world and sometimes we experience and inherit through no fault of our own broken relationships. That's part of the journey. But what the scripture is referring to, what Jesus is referring to, if you can at all within the power that you have by not omitting or the sin of omission or the sin of commission, sometimes men tend to be, well, we won't say anything and the problem will go away. It doesn't always work that way. People's hearts do hold, harbour things. Reconciliation is very important on the divine scale as it plays out in relationships. And I want to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 if you like to do that because the Apostle Paul distills it very beautifully. Reconciliation, our spirit of reconciliation is at the heart of God's work and his will. And Paul draws this out beautifully. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creation. That is, when you've come to faith, your old life doesn't bear relevance anymore. You were raised out of the baptismal waters as a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. So don't measure yourself pre-conversion. Measure yourself each day against who you are becoming all the more. Verse 18, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself. So the Father sets the pattern for reconciliation. We are broken. Jesus Christ comes at the Father's will, willingly takes on our sins and reconciles us to him. Then God asks us to replicate the reconciliation model in our lives and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So what the Father has done in Christ for us now has to be replicated in our lives. That is, in verse 19, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Wow, he entrusts to us a mirror of the work that happened on a divine scale on our behalf, that that's the heart and core of the gospel that we share. Verse 20, therefore... We are ambassadors for Christ. We are image bearers of Christ. An ambassador has no voice of his own. He only speaks the authority that he has. We are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. So our work to call to evangelism hinges on this attitude of the spirit of reconciliation. We implore you on behalf of Christ, says Paul, be reconciled to God. And the way that works is in our reconciling heart here. Verse 21, as I conclude this passage, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's very powerful. Jesus said, By this all men shall know that you are my disciples, by your love for one another. And for love to flourish, we've got to reconcile and have that spirit of grace, unmerited favour as it plays out. We are to be catalysts. Of grace, We are to be agents of building bridges, of drawing people together. Jesus said, I will draw all men to myself. That's powerful reconciliation given the fractuitous and brokenness of society, of humanity, thousands of years. So we're called to build bridges, especially in the household of faith, and then to reach out with a message of reconciliation. Mm -hmm.